last man who tried to describe California in a few well-chosen words broke down and cried. It's that kind of place. One thing you can say about it, it's never dull. Wherever you turn, there's a new touch. A touch of beauty, a touch of fantasy, a touch of chaos. It all adds up to a touch of California. Los Angeles has a small downtown area. It really gets its size from the dozens of communities surrounding it. That's where it gets its traffic, too. The freeways jam up at the rush hours, just as they do in every other city in the country. Actually, they do a remarkable job of moving several million people from one place to another every day. Angelino regards a swimming pool as a minimum backyard requirement. The architecture he uses to surround it comes dangerously close to competing with the wonders of the world. A wonder of the world, for example, like the Hollywood lot, the place the movies are made. And now, of course, the TV shows. Years ago, visitors were barred from these areas, but these days the studios want the viewers to see how it's done. This is the Universal lot, incidentally. If watching life in small scale begins to pall, you can switch from the studio to San Diego and watch the real thing in operation, the U.S. Navy. San Diego used to be a Navy town, and the Navy is still there. But the city has grown into a Southern California metropolis. Even so, the missions retain the touch of Spanish influence.
and a fine old building such as the Del Coronado Hotel contrasts nicely with all the new glass and concrete. When people mainly live outdoors, they like to have places to go. And San Diego, consequently, has one of the best zoos and one of the best aquariums to be found anywhere. Up the coast a couple 300 miles, speaking of zoos, you can find a herd of zebra, some of the last inhabitants of an excellent private zoo once owned by William Randolph Hearst. They are part of San Simeon, the incredible collection of objects that made up William Randolph's home. After he died, the family gave San Simeon to the state and tours are now conducted through the place which has been left just as Mr. Hurst lived in it. And that's the point to remember when you look at San Simeon. This was a man's home. William Randolph Hurst lived this way because he liked it and could afford it. He spent about a million dollars a year for about 50 years on his collection. And a lot of it is in San Simeon. It's quite a place. around San Simeon, you get the definite feeling that you're back in Hollywood. And they're not too far apart. This is San Simeon. And this is Hollywood. This is Hollywood too or maybe Burbank or Inglewood or another subdivision of Los Angeles. Something is always being bulldozed aside to make room for something bigger. Housing is simply handled. Hills are scraped into terraces and houses occur. Still in all, no one has to feel crowded in California because the state and federal governments control enormous areas of fine park lands. This is Point Lobo State Park, south of San Francisco. could be on another planet in Point Lobos. But you're really only a few miles from San Francisco.
San Francisco has a touch of elegance about it. The people dress a little more formally than they do in Los Angeles. One good reason is the temperature. San Francisco is cooler than Southern California. San Francisco, the city, is on a small plot of land, and the steep hills give it a special touch. It's a sort of special city. The people who live there will tell you that. And so will a lot of people who would like to live there. But once again, if you begin to feel a little crowded in San Francisco, you can drive straight east for a couple of hours and find yourself facing one of the great sights of the world, Yosemite National Park. It's still California, though. Everyone's living outdoors. And I guess that's the real touch of California, this business of living outdoors. South of Los Angeles, toward San Diego, the water sports go year round. Surf casting, water skiing, hydrofoiling, surfing, boating, and offshore fishing keep the Pacific Ocean pretty busy. You can't find much swimming. That is done in the pools. The Pacific Ocean contains uncounted billions of anchovies. And some of the fish that don't get into cans end up as bait for the fishermen. Or as food for the performing acts in the aquariums.
When you want to get back to city life, though, you can surround yourself with San Francisco's Chinatown, one of the most special areas in that special city. That's another thing about California. There's action 24 hours a day. Whether it's in a nightclub or on a fishing boat going far offshore for the albacore schools. You don't have to go offshore for fish, of course. This is Sausalito across the bay from San Francisco. And this is the fleet, hot after striped bass. Like most of the population, the striped bass came in from the east, shipped overland from the Atlantic coast. Today, it's one of the top game fish in the west. on California's rocks probably since the rocks first came out of the water. And that's another touch that you'll find in California. The land is young in the geological sense that it's still being formed, except for a few old outcroppings like the granite in Yosemite. The rocks are still soft. said you really can't describe California or if you did people wouldn't believe you 
you have to see it. And these days, that's easy. <laughs>